Hi, uh, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So in this video, I am going to introduce you with a box with the constraints. So for those of you who are not familiar, uh, box with the constraints is uh, another uh, layout composable, which will allow you to create uh, adaptive uh, layout in your application that uh, can basically expand itself based on the device uh, width and height. So uh, bottom line, it will allow you to create uh, adaptive content that uh, can look good on uh, different devices. So here in this uh, Android emulator, I have created uh, one application example just to showcase uh, how this uh, box with constraints uh, will actually work. So here, as you can see, I have just uh, one lazy column and uh, each one of those uh, items here uh, contain uh, one image, uh, one title, description and this row, which contains those uh, badges or icons. OK. So now, as you can see here, we are using uh, a portrait mode uh, of this uh, Android emulator. And so far, we can see only those uh, three badges or three icons. And also, we can see this uh, fourth badge, which is uh, displaying the number of uh, badges or icons that uh, we cannot see in this uh, portrait mode uh, of our Android emulator. However, let's try and rotate our device so we can check out and see uh, what will happen. So now, as you can see, uh, we can see six different uh, badges or icons because now we have uh, a bigger width to display all those items. So uh, in total, there are six different badges uh, which we are displaying here in each and every item uh, in this lazy column. And if I now uh, switch back to our portrait mode, then we are going to see only those uh, badges that uh, can fit in this uh, specific uh, width of this uh, item right here. And now you might be wondering, how is that possible? Well, it's possible with a box with constraints. And now I'm going to introduce you with this project and explain uh, how I uh, created this uh, adaptive layout with a box with constraints. OK, uh, so this is our uh, home screen. As you can see, we have uh, only one uh, lazy column and we are displaying uh, all those items which we are fetching uh, from our home view model. And our home view model just basically contains uh, some uh, uh, hard coded values for uh, each one of those uh, property of our uh, custom data class. OK, so we have an uh, ID, image, title, description and a list of uh, image vectors which will represent our badges. And now back in our home screen, we are using a custom card which I have designed right here. So this custom card, as you can see, contains one async image, which is the part of a coil image loading library. Uh, then we have one uh, spacer, which is basically separating our uh, image with a box with the constraints. And this uh, box with constraints contain uh, just uh, one uh, composable function, which I have made called uh, adaptive content. And this uh, adaptive content uh, is basically just an extension function on a box with a constraint uh, scope. It's just uh, more convenient to create uh, a new function than just uh, place all those uh, elements uh, directly inside our box with the constraints. Uh, anyhow, here, as you can see, uh, on top of our function, we have uh, created here uh, four different variables. And now I'm going to show you how we have actually uh, managed to uh, display uh, just a couple of those uh, uh, badges that uh, actually can fit into this uh, space on our portrait mode. So uh, now let me show you. Here we have one variable that's called the number of badges to show. And uh, in order to calculate uh, how many badges can uh, fit into this uh, uh, width container uh, or our box uh, with constraints. And as you can see here, this uh, variable is uh, basically calculating how many badges we can uh, display on our screen. And that uh, calculation is actually dynamic because it will depend on the actual width which uh, our box with the constraints actually has. Now you can see that uh, we are using the maximum width uh, uh, property of a box with a constraint scope. So this uh, max width uh, is available with a box with the constraints. We can also use some other properties like uh, max height and so on. But in most cases, when you're creating adaptive uh, content, uh, then you will use a max width instead. Now here we are dividing the maximum width uh, available in our box with the constraints and that width in this case is uh, from this uh, image to the end of this card. OK, so we are dividing that width with the number or the size of our uh, badge 
plus the padding. So here we have specified the size of each and every badge or icon uh, here in our design and also we have specified the padding between uh, each and every icon or badge here as well. Now we are dividing uh, those two values with the maximum width of our uh, box with the constraints. And then we are converting that to an integer and here I'm also adding a minus one. So now you might be wondering uh, why am I adding here minus one? Uh, well, because uh, I want to uh, reserve that uh, space for this uh, badge, which will show how many uh, uh, badges are left out there. So you will see about that. Uh, then down below, we are also uh, calculating the remaining badges. So for example, if we have uh, displayed here uh, three those badges, then the remaining badges uh, will be three again, because in total we have uh, six of them. Okay, uh, then down below you can see that um, first um, we are passing this uh, padding value down below. Let me just first show you here. So as you can see, we have just the one column. Then we have our title text, uh, then the space or the padding basically between uh, those uh, two texts. So we have our description text, we have a space and a row which contains uh, all those badges. Okay, so here in this row, I'm using a space by uh, to actually uh, set the padding between uh, each and every uh, a badge inside this row. So we are using this uh, padding uh, value which we have specified here. And of course, if I increase this uh, padding to maybe, let's say, uh, 40, uh, then we are not going to be able to see three images or three uh, icons. Now we will see only two of them because the padding or the space between them is now larger. And now there are four different uh, badges left to check out. And now if I rotate right here, we will be able to see uh, five of them, but this uh, one will not be visible, okay? So you would have, for example, to open this uh, item and show a detail screen to show all those badges. All right, so there you go. Let's just um, set that back to 24. Uh, okay, so now as you can see in this row, we are basically displaying uh, all those icons which we have uh, received from this uh, data. So uh, basically here I'm accessing this uh, badges list and I'm taking only a specified number of those uh, badges which we have calculated with this uh, number of badges to show variable. And here we are just uh, showing those icons that we have uh, calculated with this uh, number of badges to show a variable, okay? And of course below that we are displaying this uh, box uh, with this uh, number only if the remaining badges is uh, greater than zero. Now, the last thing which I want to show you here is also um, how we have actually calculated um, how many uh, badges we can fit into this uh, available space. So, for example, in this uh, case, when we are uh, in portrait mode, uh, the width of this uh, box with the constraints is about uh, 200 dp. And when we increase that or change the rotation of our device, then uh, the width of our box with the constraints will increase. And now I'm going to open up uh, uh, Adobe XD so that uh, I can uh, demonstrate uh, how this calculation is actually done. Okay, so here let's say that um, uh, the width of this rectangle is uh, 200. So this is the width uh, of our uh, box with the constraints in a portrait mode, okay? And now uh, I'm going to take that right here. So here uh, we need to divide the maximum width of our uh, box with the constraints with the padding value and the size of our icon. So here I'm going to say divide with uh, 48 because uh, if you recall, uh, the badge size is 24 and the padding is 24. So 24 plus 24 is equal 48. And now if I just uh, here uh, press enter, then we're going to see and uh, get the value of uh, 4.17. Let's just say that uh, it was a 4, okay? So it means that uh, this uh, whole width uh, can be divided into uh, four different cells. So divide that with a four. And then as you can see, we now have uh, four different cells which we can place in that uh, specific width of our uh, badge, okay? So those are four different cells and in each cell we can place uh, one icon. So that's uh, how we can calculate uh, how many uh, icons we can place in this uh, box with the constraints based on the width of our box with the constraints and also based on the size and the padding between uh, each one of those icons as well. So now, of course, whenever we increase the size of our uh, uh, box with the constraints width, then there will be more place to actually um, show uh, some more uh, cells or more icons. Okay, so now I hope that you understand uh, how this uh, calculation is actually working. So it's uh, quite simple, actually. 
And uh, one more thing that uh, I want to mention here uh, about uh, this uh, box with the constraints. Uh, now, if we check the official documentation for this uh, box with the constraints, uh, then we can uh, read here that uh, this composable uh, provides a measurement constraints that you can use to call different composables based on the space that uh, is available. However, this uh, comes at uh, some expense, as a box with the constraints defers composition until the layout phase, when these constraints are known, causing more work to be performed during a layout. So a common uh, use case for a box with the constraints is with uh, custom UI components like this one. Because whenever we place our box with a constraint, we will be able to receive its available uh, width and height, and then with those values we can basically calculate how many items uh, we can display, and uh, create uh, adaptive content which uh, will look good on basically uh, each and every device. Now, uh, one more important thing here to note is that um, uh, along with this uh, box with the constraints, we should also use uh, some relative values and not uh, fixed values. So for example, here you can see that uh, with this uh, async image and with our box with the constraints, I'm using a weight modifier. So for our async image, I have specified the weight of a 1F and with our box with the constraints, I have specified 1.5F, which means that our box with the constraints uh, will take uh, half more space than this uh, image right here. And by specifying this uh, weight modifier, we will be able to see this uh, image and this uh, whole box with the constraints even better with uh, other orientations as well. So as you can see here, we are also taking uh, one uh, a weight modifier for our image and 1.5 uh, a weight modifier for our uh, box with the constraints. So by not specifying the fixed size for this image, this image uh, can look uh, big on a uh, landscape mode for example, and it can look uh, smaller on our portrait mode. So bottom line, you should always use uh, relative values, like this uh, weight uh, modifier and not uh, fixed values. That way your layout will fit uh, perfectly fine with uh, each and every device's uh, screen size. Okay, so now I hope that you have enjoyed uh, watching this video and that you have uh, learned uh, a lot uh, about this uh, box with the constraints. You have seen in practice uh, how easy it is to adapt uh, your uh, custom UI component uh, on a different screen sizes based on the available width and height. In this case we have just used the maximum width, but you can also use a maximum height as well. Anyhow, uh, be sure to comment down below and uh, like this video if you find it uh, helpful of course. And uh, see you next one. I die, I'm a legend when